trying to work out this morning and get a run in, but that is not happening. It is miserable. I'm gonna go try to find another way to work out. Then I wanna to talk to you guys about multi-domain operations. How and where do we implement artificial intelligence? Welcome back guys. Wasn't able to run, still a crappy day, but that lets me film this for you guys. So what is multi-domain operations? How do we apply AI to that? It'll be about 15 minutes. Do have a treat for you, a trolley problem uh, that'll help illustrate some of the challenges associated here. So to help frame this discussion, I'm gonna use the speech uh, I gave at a conference in Spain on artificial intelligence and multi-domain operations. So what is multi-domain operations? You've probably heard of it. You've probably heard about anti-access area denial, air land sea battle, multi-domain command and control, JADC2, a lot of buzzwords for it. But basically the United States, China, Russia, uh, others are seeing that we've been at relative peace for a long time, which is great, which is awesome. Uh, we need to start preparing in competition for all of the possibilities. So Russia, for instance, is expanding uh, their sphere of influence down through Turkey, uh, Belarus, um, arguably Egypt. And you see that China is doing a little bit of the same thing, expanding in the South China Sea through the first island chain, projecting through the second island chain in a lot of ways as well, trying to increase their sphere of influence at least regionally, um, but they're hoping globally as well, and then preventing others from interfering, from projecting power into their areas. The way that the U.S. thinks about countering that is through a network solution across all of the domains where you're bringing all of that to bear simultaneously against that potential adversary. Um, China and Russia are not adversaries right now, uh, but they are competitors, and the U.S. thinks we need to be prepared in the case we do need to project power. So multi-domain operations is that solution. Multi-domain operations are our ability to create multiple dilemmas across multiple domains at an overwhelming speed, while preventing our adversary from doing the same. We need to be able to present our decision makers with relevant information with that fire hose of data that's coming in, tailor that so that they can make high velocity and smarter, better uh, decisions. That time and information advantage is only possible at the speed and throughput, the scale, with artificial intelligence, autonomy, human machine teaming, some sort of augmented intelligence I don't know if you've heard about OODA loop, observe, I see something happening, orient, I have some sort of framing and background on what's happening, I make a decision, and then I can act either kinetically or non-kinetically on that. A2AD, we talked about earlier, that's an anti-access area denial. Um, multiple countries are creating what's considered a porcupine an area where an adversary, potential adversary, is not able to project power inside of. You're hardening up your shell, making spikes out so that an adversary wouldn't want to eat you. This environment favors AI. One, you're dangerous going inside of that area. Your communications could be non-existent or threaten your existence in that environment. And that artificial intelligence is able to increase the agility, the strength, the speed, the coordination, the balance of all of that in and outside of that A2AD, that networked solution, while decreasing the communication and decreasing the cost, both dollar figure, and then more importantly, that, that life figure, that pink, pretty pink body figure. Multi-domain operations is more than just bringing those stacked domains to bear. It's a synergized approach at hyper velocity uh, approaching that holistic problem of multiple dilemmas across those domains. Here's what we'll talk about really quick, multi-domain, some challenges with it. I'll provide a trolley problem, which is really cool, a real world example. And then how do we think about applying AI where? And then I'll close. Here's a little diagram of some AI progress. If you want to think about Intelligence has existed longer than humans have, but for all intents and purposes, we're thinking of intelligence in the frame of a human here. In the span of 5,000 years, for instance, we've seen relatively slow growth in intelligence. Artificial intelligence is changing that. It's completely 
uh, ramping at a supersonic, superhuman speed. Just in the last human years, we've went from a com uh, computer a, a machine being able to move three pieces on a chessboard, for instance, through uh, Dota and StarCraft II, which are huge changes. So why are we using games? Games are analogous to the real world. And the, what's good too is they enable us to use reinforcement and other uh, types of learning very, very quickly. We can rapidly iterate on uh, models and algorithms to improve them. And the good thing too throughout games is that we're seeing an increase in their ambiguity, their use of imperfect knowledge, uh, cooperation requirements, uh, long sequences that require memory, uh, things that would absolutely be requirements and transferable into the real world and then also in military applications. Mm -hmm. So that's why games and some of these developments is, is so important. And then down at the bottom you can see that the complexity growth that's occurred, for instance from uh, tic-tac-toe, which isn't very intelligent and complex, uh, through Dota 2 and StarCraft, which the possibilities of moves and actions is almost infinite. You've heard artificial intelligence, machine learning, neural networks, deep networks, deep neural networks, um, lots of buzzwords being thrown around. Here's how it is simply. Artificial intelligence, an unnatural agent, it's not a human, that's able to perform at a human level. That's it, that's period. Machine learning, is that machine, that unnatural agent, that's able to perform at a human level, but it's able to learn and adapt from its environment and new data. Neural net is a subset of that machine learning, inspired loosely by the synapses, the neurons in your brain. In serial and parallel processing, um, summing the weights that it's receiving in, if you want to think about it as a neuron, and then outputting a charge or not outputting a charge. It was based on the perceptron from the 60s of being able to recognize a circle, square, triangle. It was one layer. And now we have deep neural networks. So the deep neural network, deep refers to the, the depth of it and our inability to see exactly what's going on in the middle of that neural network. So in the middle of that neural network, we can technically see exactly what's going on there math-wise, but we're not able to interpret what that is because it's so deep. And why we're able to sacrifice that um, transparency is because of the power from it. I have three examples down at the bottom here where you can see this deep neural network is able to tell that a group of young people is playing a game of Frisbee. If you stop and think about that, that's absolutely mind-blowing that this computer is able to recognize that one, there's a person, two, that there's a group of people, they're playing a game, and that little white dot is a Frisbee. Some humans probably couldn't even tell that that's uh, a frisbee, much less that these are uh, playing a game of frisbee. As you progress towards the right, you're going to start to see a little bit more challenges associated. The sec second picture, the middle picture, says that two hockey players are fighting over a puck. This isn't necessarily true. They are playing hockey, that's true, but there's no puck in the picture. It knows that they're fighting over the puck because it's seen thousands and maybe even a tens of thousands of images of hockey, but these two players, if you notice, they're on the same team, so they're not really fighting over that puck. And then that final picture, a little girl with a pink hat is blowing a bubble. Obviously not blowing a bubble, maybe not even a girl, but it's been trained so many times on images like this that it jumps to that conclusion. How do we apply AI in multi-domain operations? Why do we apply AI in multi-domain operations? Because we need to shift from an army does this, Navy does this, Air Force does this, to a holistic approach to an enterprise-wide solution of putting all of our forces, our effects, to bear. We need it to be hyper-connective. That network needs to always be on, always be working. Multi-region, joint, coalition, uh, time and place of our choosing, high velocity, lots of buzzwords here. But you can think of this in basically three different buckets. Your sensing, your decision, and then your action. So I'm going to see what's happening on my environment. I'm going to make a decision to do something or not do something. And then I'm going to be able to act on that uh, through a chain of actions or um, kinetic or non-kinetic action. AI application areas concern inside the concept of joint operations 2030. We're trying to create mass. We're trying to reduce risk. We're trying to reduce cost. Simple as that. How do we do that? We improve the understanding just like Sunset wrote improving ourselves, our environment, and our adversary.
2,000 year old you know proverb if you will but still trying to chase that goal we need to uh, improve that competitive advantage per the NDS with that sense to side and act and then achieve that hyper velocity speed accuracy persistence that is only possible with machines where we're not trying to apply this is anywhere that the risk of failure is high or the strategic consequences or catastrophic results could be high from that anywhere there's ambiguity I see this action I'm not sure if it means this or maybe something else heuristics of humans might be able to tell that very easily but potentially not with uh, computers and machines anywhere that there's not enough data yet we need to collect more and that's another uh, area you can implement that AI initially see what data you need potentially and then iteratively work to improve that and then anywhere that's core creativity originality responsibility and empathy is somewhere where right now machines are not better than humans at holistically you might have heard of the five V's of data this is where AI thrives if there's an abundance of volume the velocity of the data is way too fast for humans to keep up the variety the unstructured nature of it the veracity these are areas where AI can't replace ne uh, necessarily the humans but can absolutely augment the humans uh, you can't take that fire hose of data you're gonna have that uh, machine help you with that information operations scraping of OSINT open source Intel huge potential there okay that's all cool where is it being done today in multi-domain operations here's a couple examples maintenance has an abundance of data and could be used you know machines can help us out significantly it's being applied right now in helicopter maintenance uh, this engine needs to be changed now because we're seeing these things uh, this is the temperature inside the engine that you know corresponds correlates to this behavior so we're actually able to um, tie correlations and actually prescribe actions based on that which is a very good advance helping those maintainers keep that ops rate for those planes high ISR intelligence surveillance reconnaissance process exploitation and dissemination if you want to think about the person not flying in that cockpit but the back end of that analyzing the video feed the thousands and millions of hours of video that's collected exactly what's going on in that video and then potentially tying that to other videos uh, and imagery wide area motion imagery is a whammy sensor that's looking at three or four kilometers of an area you can't have a human that's being able to pick out every single car and individual in that area for instance but humans can help flag things for humans to pay attention to acoustic detection uh, recognition I'm not gonna sit under the sea for nine months trying to detect a submarine walking by um, but that's something that humans or machines could do very well some of the challenges in AI AI is really good at very narrow applications sometimes it's hard to transfer from the lab to the real world but it's easier if you focus on a very narrow application complexity is difficult you're basically trying to simplify a very complex world so that can be extremely difficult um, when you're looking at this you're considering what type of confidence do I need do I need 99.9% .9 confidence is that good enough for human life to be on the line is 99.99% confidence good enough and then you can see what happens here as we're trying to assess and analyze an AK-47 and then trying to assess an AK-47 in the real world that confidence drops significantly from just feeding it images through what's it's actually looking at from 30,000 feet in a sensor obviously uh, different here's the trolley problem I'm talking to you about and this is this is really cool stuff so trolley problem refers to the age-old ethical problem of a trolley running down the tracks uh, if you don't do anything there's a guy on the tracks um, let's say four guys on the track if you don't do anything it's gonna run over those four individuals you have the option to throw a lever and that trolley will be diverted to another track on that track there's one individual and that individual will die do you throw that lever four guys one guy so in this situation you're flying an f-16 an mq-9 uh, you were just cleared hot on this target uh, which is a bad guy that we've been following for two months he's responsible for numerous uh, embassy bombings and other nefarious activity so you just fired your hellfire it's in the air you're lasing that in laser designation is on the screen there as you can see 
what's that on the right side of the video. So as we go to the next video, we can see that that little dot starts turning towards our target that we're laser designating. And that dot looks like it's now a motorcycle. That was pretty quick. What do we do? Do we keep designating that target? Let's continue. The pilot elects to post launch abort or shift cold by dragging that laser energy to an adjacent field. Hellfire explodes. Uh, no civilian casualties. Pay attention to the top left corner. That motorcycle continues. The individual we were targeting that day uh, obviously lives, uh, but that innocent bystander does not uh, die, thankfully. So thinking about AI, we need to think about where AI can help humans make better decisions and actions, not necessarily where humans can get put in the uh, AI decision chain. That's the wrong way of thinking about it. New systems that we're inventing today must be AI ready from the start, not try to bolt it on afterwards. That's a recipe for failure. AI is a tool, it's a technology. It is not a solution. The moment you start chasing AI just to chase AI, you will not achieve effects. Training, testing, and evaluation, I mentioned this in other videos. Uh, I'll link one above, it's a really good one, are extremely important. You cannot pass that up. You cannot forget to do that. It must be vigorous. It must be red teamed uh, before the adversary is able to do that. And then I believe uh, explainable AI is an absolute delu uh, delusion. There is no such thing if you have a sufficiently advanced AI. You can know 99.999% chance of exactly what it's going to do, uh, but you're not going to be able to test all of the scenarios that it will face in the real world to be 100% confident in exactly how it will perform. Just like if you asked me why I wore this shirt today, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly why I picked this out I can try to rationalize it in my mind, but I had an emotional connection. There was other things going on, synapses firing, that I'm not fully aware of. Just the same, a uh, little bit different with machines. And then ethics, definitely can't forget ethics. And the machine man teaming ethics are extremely important. So multi-domain operations are synergized ops across those domains where we bring everything that we can to bear as quick as we can to try to solve problems as, as quick as we can. Ideally, if we master this, there will be no war because we can bring such an effect to bear so fast, so rapid that our adversary would be so paralyzed and they realize this, uh, that there would be no conflict in the first place. Future wars will be won if they're ever fought with information and time advantage. AI, augmentation, autonomy are needed to ensure our competitiveness today and in the future. AI is a tool, it's not a destination. AI is to achieve value, it's not to achieve AI. Keep that in mind. US is absolutely committed to meaningful human control in autonomy, in AI. So the thought of a lethal robot out there running amok, um, Terminator style, is an absolute fallacy. Use areas today are where can we improve human decision making and human action and where should we seek those small victories and then build on each other so that we eventually get to eat that elephant and then don't overlook testing and evaluation thanks guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe down below and then would love comments uh, what do you guys like of this what did you not like of this how can i improve for each of your videos what, what do you want to see appreciate it thanks